Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, good morning and thank you. Today is Thursday, November 10th, 2022. It's 830. Um, need a, a motion to approve the agenda. So move. Second. Got a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Board action to approve consent agenda items. Is there a motion to that extent? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Got a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Um, okay, on to the first item of uh, regular business. And uh, my apologies. If anybody wanted to speak to any of those issues, we've got a new policy here in Lincoln County now, and that allows you to speak on any uh, agenda item. And I'm just getting in the habit of uh, remembering to do that. So if anybody wanted to speak on those agenda items, just let us know. My apologies. Uh, I'll do a better job here moving forward of uh, making sure we allow people the opportunity consistent with our policy. So agenda item number one, board discussion action regarding joint board of mental illness rate, uh, Aaron Johnson and Bill Golden. Good morning. Morning. Um, so I'm Erin Johnson, and this is Megan Bush. Um, you might remember that Katie Johnson and I are co-chairs of the board of, board of Mental Illness, and Megan Bush is our alternate. And we are asking today for an increase in the pay of our lay board members. Um, at the time that the joint board was created, um, I believe that was 2007, and the amount set for the pay uh, per hour of our lay board members was $32 an hour. The, the lay board members are the individuals who, along with either Katie, Megan, or I, um, make determinations on commitment or release um, for a mental illness commitment in a mental illness hearing. And we are asking that you increase the um, the pay for these individuals. 15 years ago, when this joint board was created, the pay was set at $32 an hour, and it is still $32 an hour for these individuals. Um, so these individuals uh, join us in the mental illness hearings, and they use their own computers, they use their own paper, they use their own internet, their own phones, and they are not reimbursed for any of those costs and they don't ask for reimbursement of those costs. Um, prior to COVID, everyone was driving to behavioral health for these hearings, and at this time we're doing them all by Zoom. COVID forced us to go to Zoom, so everything is electronic. We all, um, we all join the meeting over Zoom. We're, the joint board members aren't asking for reimbursement for mileage or anything like that. So I think that the county has actually saved money since um, COVID because we haven't had to pay mileage for the board members at all. Um, so I don't know that this is going to actually increase a lot of cost for the county, but we are asking, we would really like to ask for $75 an hour, but we're going to ask for $64 an hour, which would just double it. So um, I think Megan has made a good point that, you know, there, there's been no cost of living increase or anything like that during this time, and, and we're talking about 15 years ago. Megan was a sophomore in high school 15 years ago. And <laughs> so we, we would like an increase um, to $64 an hour for the lay board members. Aaron, how many lay board members are there right now? I, I I'm thinking we have two lay board members and I believe we have three alternates. Mm -hmm. I think that's how we did it. And then if we were to raise this to $64 an hour, what does that result in for uh, historically then? What would the, be the 
total dollar amount the county has to put out each year then? I, I'm not able to answer that. But I can tell you that uh, many weeks we would only have one or two hearings. Is that the average, one or two hearings? How long do the hearings go for? It's difficult to say, and that's one I of the heard. issues for that's one of the issues for the board members. So <laughs> they have to be available on Tuesdays and Fridays at 1:30, and we have no way of knowing how long we're going to ask them to be available. We don't know whether the patient is going to testify. Um, we don't know how long the QMHP is going to testify. So it's really there's a lot of unknowns, and so we're asking these people to be available at 1:30 on Tuesdays and Fridays and we can't tell them how long we're gonna need them. I think something that's also important to note for these individuals is we aren't able to give them a lot of notice for whether or not there's going to be a hearing, how many hearings there will be. Um, so there's just a lot of unknowns and, and we're kind of putting a lot of burden um, on these individuals to be available and to give us their time for $37 is, is just a very low amount. So we get about one or two a week, and then um, one or two a week, 52 weeks a year, 52 times 12, 104, 104 times 64, a couple thousand bucks? Give or take. Okay. So to recap, they provide all their own resources. They do. So the only thing that they don't are, that uh, is their time. I, they supply everything else themselves. That's correct. And, you know, when you talk about uh, uh, travel today, expenses, which is quite high, mm -hmm. and now we're on Zoom, so we don't have any of that. So That's correct. We may, wear, may very well be neutral after the raise. The money we save versus the added. But you're putting compensation back in the people whose time and talent and expertise that we need. That's correct. And you should know, we look for individuals who are maybe retired nurses or other retired healthcare professionals. Um, we have a couple individuals right now um, who are uh, work for the Sioux Falls Police Department. Um, so we look for people who are in occupations that may have some experience that would be helpful in this area. Okay. Are you still in need of additional um, alternates? We are, and so that's what we're also uh, hoping that this would help, that um, an increase in the pay might be, you know, at least to help us with finding additional board members. Well, this is certainly a critical need. You're dealing with people's lives. You're dealing with mental health situations which are not decreasing, unfortunately. They're increasing, and you're going to need all the expertise that you can find. That's so, correct. yeah. I mean, it, fact of life is we're going to, you're going to have to pay. Mr. Chair, I don't know the protocol, but I don't have any heartburn with this at all. Sure. So the way we'll do this is before there's a motion. Is there anybody from the, well, first of all, uh, Aaron and Megan, do you have anything additional you want to say? Not, no, nothing further. Okay. No. Does any member of the public wish to speak to this agenda item? Okay, seeing none. Um, does uh, you've heard the request is there a motion I so move to uh, accept their recommendation that the compensation go from $32 an hour to $64 an hour okay we've got a motion to increase it from 32 to 64 is there a second I'll second it got a motion and second is there any discussion okay Seeing, hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Okay, thank you ladies for coming in and telling us about the situation. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, okay, next agenda item, we've got to appoint two commissioners to work on space needs in the courthouse. Bill Golden. Thank you. Yes, um, we're, since the courts have went ahead and informed us they're going to use the commission room for hmm? the do? courtroom. I don't care. Uh, I mean. There's going to be another judge down here. And so that raises the issue of space needs in the courthouse as to where that judge is going to be housed. We also have space needs from other departments. And so um, I think this is a commission decision on 
where people are at, what space we have, and what happens there. And so I'm asking for two commissioners to look into it and uh, look at our space needs. I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. Um, okay, so um, we've determined who's going to do it. Myself, Commissioner Schmidt will. Um, does any member, first of all, Bill, do you have any, anything else you want to say? Nope. One question I do have is, just to clarify, this is probably more so for the public, um, you said there is an additional judge that's going to be down here full time, or I can't address the how much time they're going to be down here. I believe Judge Howman's going to come down and specifically address that on the twenty second. Okay, but we've been notified um, because in January the courthouse in Minnehaha County is no longer available to us, and I believe what we were told is there has been a thousand cases held up there associated with that court courtroom so those are all coming back to Lincoln County and so Judge Peckis has been handling all of those um, so I would imagine he's going to have to be down here for some period of time and so we will have him for whether it's full-time or part-time we will have him down here at some point okay Bill, Bill, just well. to clarify <clears throat> and maybe for some of the public too is this the question we'll probably get is this a Temporary or permanent? What what are we looking at here in this? Two commissioners looking into space. Um, until something changes, this is just a start. I mean, um, our case numbers keep going up, so it's not going to go down. The courts aren't going to um, ask for less space. It's only going to be they're going to ask for more space. And um, as they come into the, I mean, we're already mixing the administrative side of the building with the courthouse side of the building. Mm -hmm. And um, it's only going to expand. I would expect that the next move would be the multi-purpose room for a courtroom downstairs. <coughs> um, so. Okay. Thank you. Any member of the public wish to address this agenda item? Okay, seeing, hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, number three, board action authorized state's attorney's office to make an offer on property adjacent to the airport. I believe there was, um, Commissioner Poppins was going to address this. I believe there were some conversations previously. Um, and so there was a request to be able to make an offer on that property out there. Um, I think we're going to address it in executive session so you know what the contract negotiations are prior to making an authorization. So um, I would ask that you hold it off until we're able to clarify some of that information for you so you can make an informed decision. Okay. Is there a motion to table this item until uh, we've addressed it in executive session? I'll so move. Second. Motion and second. Uh, any discussion from the public? On this agenda item, okay. Hearing, hearing none. Seeing none. Clerk, call, call the roll, please. Commissioner Gibbon, yes. Commissioner Poppins, yes. Commissioner Schmidt, yes. Commissioner Aaron's, yes. Okay, thank you. Number four, board discussion on courthouse cost estimates. Do you just want to put a chair up there and stay there? <laughs> <laughs> I clearly need the exercise. <laughs> you should probably keep me running back and forth. Um, there was a request by Commissioner Landine that um, Mr. Strasburg and, and uh, Henry Carlson come down here and discuss some of the cost estimates. I believe there are some questions about options and potential changes to some of the designs or some of the cost estimates on locations and buildings. And so they have put together uh, an option for you to look at, and then they're here to answer questions. So that was what the request had been. Okay. So yeah. let me. Let's hear from. Uh... Sure, uh, Dick Strasberg with Tegra. So in response to your request of, of looking at the, the site that's west of town here on, on doing a courthouse building on that property, 
Uh, we had looked at it previously and said this is what we recommend if it's going to be a long-term solution and where you build out uh, sort of everything that's needed um, for, the, for that solution, which would include uh, space for courts, uh, attorney general, uh, state's, state's attorney, uh, the uh, sheriff's department, and all the other court-related functions. And the cost of that was at $83 million. So then we were challenged to come back and say, what can we do for something that's more like the cost of what was proposed to add onto this building of $53 million? So we looked at that and thought, you know, one of the things that's, that's really needed with a county that's growing this, this fast and this steadily is really something that's going to work for the long haul. Because I think we, uh, I think the parties have determined that we need a, a minimum of four courtrooms right now. But when you project out with a population, with a caseload, if you go out 20 years, that looks more like, you know, 12 courtrooms. It's hard to forecast out that far, but it's a, it's, it's a big number. Uh, so you know, how do we accomplish that? How do we have something so you aren't doing a project every, you know, three to five years? So what we came up with was proposing to do a three-story courtroom that ultimately would be built out for 12 courtrooms. It would have the first level would be for things that would be uh, uh, things that related to, to support the courts, which would be jury assembly, clerk of courts, uh, some, uh, you know, some attorney space, uh, and then uh, space for the sheriff's department at least to have a, uh, uh, some holding cells and they have other, other court services, have a sally port. So that would be on the, the first level. Second level would be ultimately six courtrooms. Third level would be ultimately six courtrooms. But as an interim solution would be to build the first level out with a goal of having that long term. So that's, you build that out once and you're done. And then uh, the jail would expand uh, mm -hmm the jail and the full sheriff's department would expand from that first level with the whole goal of designing it in such a way that, that we're doing this once, you build it, and it will last for the long haul. Okay. Second level, which would be future courts, but in the interim, build it out a portion of the floor for the state's attorney's office. And I think there'd be a way we could do that and, and direct the architects to, uh, you know, we could build out the offices for the future judges' chambers, and really try and design this thing. So although it would be used by the state's attorney uh, for the, uh, to accommodate their needs for the shorter term, when it eventually gets uh, converted to courtrooms, there wouldn't be a, a lot of remodel. The idea is that we'd push it as far as we could. Obviously, there's changes with mechanical and, and so on, but you know, set it up for the future. Then the third level would be built out as four courtrooms initially, with shell space for, uh, for two more courts. So that's the concept behind this. You'd have a building that would serve all of your needs immediately uh, with uh, you know, keeping the sheriff's department here, keeping the other functions of the county here. Uh, it would tear down the, the uh, current uh, old courthouse. And we had money in there for, uh, for patching the facade because when you add it on to the courthouse, uh, you know, with this, with this addition that we're standing in right now, uh, if we take the courthouse down, there'd be a scar left. So we put dollars in for repairing that scar, designed sort of to be determined. But that's what we've got as a conceptual uh, design. And then on the cost model side of it, uh, it would be a 77,250 square foot shell. So that would be the it's 24,750 per floor. So it's a three-story building uh, with a little addition on it for the Sally Port, a 3,000 square foot addition for the, for a, a little, a little, not necessarily addition, it would be a, a little bump out on the first floor for the Sally Port. And then second floor would be uh, roughly half finished and half shell. And third floor would be about 75% finished. So that's the concept behind it. Um, Dollar-wise on that, it comes up to 53300 for what we just described there. Uh, and then we've got the issue of the off-site uh, utility costs. So that starts to create a model at least to have a discussion from and to uh, 
to work from. Henry Carlson is here today, and we can sure they're the ones that put together the construction cost estimates, and we can All right. uh, open for questions. Thanks, Dick. A couple different questions here. Did you produce any options with other than at option number three, the Greenfield site? No. Okay. So no options other than the Greenfield site. Understood. So we don't have the ability to assess, determine, or discuss anything other than the Greenfield site today, right? Well, we've done a lot of work on this existing site and looked okay. you know, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the schemes, uh, the first option, A and B. I think we've vetted those out pretty well. We sure can answer questions on those. And this was intended, the, the whole purpose of doing this is to get the discussion going on, a, on just the option of, of doing something similar to what was proposed to add on to this building. <coughs> And just instead of doing here, do it on a greenfield site. And how, how might that work? How might that uh, pencil out? And also setting yourself up so the future, um, it would have an a, a expansion out on that site that would take you the long haul. That's the whole concept behind this. You'd have a 12 courtroom solution in the future. And uh, with the idea you'd add on uh, space for the, eventually for the state's attorney and add on for potentially a jail. Yeah, I think taxpayers deserve more uh, opportunity, though, or more options to discuss, at least, yeah. since we're in this phase. Yeah, we agree. So, we, have, we put this together in about a week. Right. And so we're I think happy to do more options. Yeah, <laughs> so I think the next thing that needs to come is there needs to be some discussion on other options on other sites, i.e., if we were to um, uh, pursue the campus development option here of building next to us, uh, next to this courthouse, because what I notice here in option number three, just going back to analyze the option you put in front of us, that option proposes building a $58 million building out at the Greenfield site, and then it also proposes knocking down the old courthouse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in my mind, if we're building a new $58 million building, I kind of wonder why we're knocking down the old courthouse, because uh, then we're we're eliminating usable space that can be used uh, for you know a certain period of time. I don't know what the uh, number of years is that the old courthouse has in it, but I'd assume it's more than two, or more than the construction season or amount of time it's going to take to build the fifty-eight million dollar building. Right? I mean, you've reviewed the the structural engineer's report with regard to the old courthouse, right? Yes, we've reviewed the reports. We've been through it. We've analyzed it, um, looked at uh, at uh, the condition of it, and I think it's our team's uh, opinion. It's reached the end of its useful life without spending substantial dollars. And also, we look at buildings that are uh, that have. You know, good bones, and uh, meaning that they can you can renovate them, and where it makes long-term sense on that on, to do that. On this building, on the courthouse, uh, it is it needs substantial renovation, and we'd invite you to go through on a tour. We look at the you know the de deterioration and so on on it. There's lots lots of issues on that building. Yeah, I mean, so mm -hmm. let's dig into that a little bit. Um, you know, in terms of substantial renovation. But it's not going to fall down two years from now, and it can Correct. still be used in its current existing state, right? right. It can so be if used. we wanted to do yeah. something more in there, yes, more dollars will be needed. But if you just wanted to use it for the next 10 years, you could, right? You could, but the things that I think are the things that are from a, just a public responsibility, I mean, uh, dealing with the bats, dealing with ADA, Dealing with uh, the safety issues you have within the courthouse of, of uh, you know the the mix between uh, the defendants and the jury and the defendant and the uh, the public and the the judges, it violates virtually every one of the protocols that are that uh, should be used in a courthouse. But hold on, Dick. Uh, we're you're, we're mixing two issues here. You could. I'm not talking about continuing to use the old courthouse as courtrooms. If there was construction, whatever that new construction may be, whether it's here on site, across <clears throat> the street, or out at the uh, Greenfield site, 
obviously then there would be no more use, there'd be no more courtroom use there, but you can still use that as office space. Sure. Okay. You could, I mean, it takes some money to do it, but well, not, yeah. not nice office space, but you know, yes, it could be used. Right. Yeah. Mr. Chair, could we go back? I mean, I, I know that uh, you have your priorities on what you're talking about, but in front of us today, we have a proposal that uh, Dick has brought us that I'd like to spend more time on rather than getting side dressed on whether we utilize the old courthouse. Now, there is $700,000 listed in here for demolition, which may or may not be necessary. Correct. Yeah. If, if, Correct. if it was the decision to uh, pres preserve that, there's $700,000 that can be redirected uh, to do that. Correct. So, Nick, you're looking towards the future that we have. When we look at um, the, the uh, area that we, that we have to work with, Commissioner Aarons talks about a campus concept, and yeah, we've looked at the campus concept, which comes with the purchase of lots of property so that we have future expansion, we still haven't got the parking. So in your estimation, this particular facility, as it presented today, would take care of the needs now and for what? For like the next 10 years or so, would you I, say? I think that it's designed to uh, accommodate it for 10 plus years. You would have to build out some additional courtrooms kind of as that need presented itself. But the, you'd already have the shell space and be just finished out the interior. Dick, your, your third floor, again, you made mention of four courtrooms and what else? And that'd be shell space for an additional two courtrooms. An additional two courtrooms. Mm -hmm. So there'd be six courtrooms per floor on second floor and third floor. So there'd be four of them built out on the, the, the top floor immediately with the expansion of two additional. And that's still a debate, too, in terms of how many should be So then should be we would out. eventually end up with 12 courtrooms. You'd end up with 12 court. That's the whole concept behind it. Is you'd end up with 12 courtrooms long term. The uh, state's attorneys would have to be moved out you know, somewhere along the line, kind of as a need. And could this plan be used just here, or could it also be used at the Greenfield? It could be used on either site. Um, it does, uh, you run into other issues with, you know, having space for the state's attorneys uh, that would, you know, would, because they're going to expand roughly the same as the courts. And uh, you start running out of space on this campus for the state's attorney and the other, other offices, and also for the sheriff's uh, department. Uh, so, and it doesn't set yourself up to do, uh, to have an attached jail because downtown there's, uh, we, I think we've studied this downtown enough to realize that, uh, trying to get a, you know, a, a, a jail downtown here is very challenging from a state space perspective, space and cost. The thing that you've laid out here, is that 77,250, is that square feet? Yes, it is. Okay. Given that. Is there 77,250 square feet on this campus to build this thing? There is. Would be next to the sidewalk? It, it, it would be a substantial, uh, and it's a very substantial building to put next to this building, but it does fit. It will fit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is your concern about possible moving the Veterans Memorial, if there'd be room for that, Commissioner Schmidt? Well, I... Veterans Memorial, <laughs> Susan and I have chased that around <laughs> for a long time, and I think that if you if you didn't move it uh, out, you would it would stay here. If it went out to um, the uh, west, I think that uh, that may be a desirable thing, and maybe that would be up to the American Legion and uh, VFW if they wanted to participate in that. Now, you know, the 77,000 square feet that you're talking about, Dick, you're not saying that's right behind us here, are you? That's replacing the courthouse. Correct. That's in front. That's in front. And then you've looked at, if you went to the west as well and pursued a campus concept, mm -hmm. we also have 77,000 square feet under we, that, correct? We've looked, we've looked at this, the property that you own right now. Right. We've looked at you know, the properties across the street, mm -hmm. across, you know, going every direction. You know, where, how can we expand it? Can we, you know, close down a street? Can we, you know, what can we, what can we do? Look at the utilities and what's all involved. Um, it can be done. It just, 
it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of dollars. The big question Nick, will be, I mean, in my mind, is we have a fifty-three thousand dollar <coughs> expenditure for a building. Is there substantial saving? Huh? Fifty-three million. Not fifty-three million. million. Excuse me. I. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a fifty-three thousand. You're going to act on it. <laughs> uh, is there a substantial sa savings that would put it to on this campus, with the limitations that that has for the future? Because we still haven't addressed critical issues of parking. We still have an additional for expansion, for purchase of property. Will people want to sell, uh, et cetera? Is there a substantial savings between that site and Greenfield site? Maybe you should bring um, Henry Carlson up here, and they can maybe um, you know, help address that. But I think the, the big picture on it, the, the big difference on it is we've got a million and a half dollars uh, budgeted for site improvements out of the Greenfield site, and then you've got the whole utility issue to deal with yeah. on how you get the utilities out there. Yeah, because the utilities to the Greenfield site are 5.5 million plus the 1.5 million for site improvement out there. So that's $7 million. It, it would, you'd have some, right? some of that cost you'd still have on site improvements here for doing a sally port and so on. So what would be the difference here versus there? Dave, you have other thoughts on that? Well, before you start, I wanna, I wanna make one thing clear. When we start talking about what we put in for infrastructure, the county does have the capacity to get that money back. They may not get it back immediately in a check, but over time they will get it back because they can put a stipend on, and Mr. Nelson, I'll give him full credit, when we talked, gave us idea that you will get a certain portion of that uh, amount of uh, infrastructure that you put in, and you put that on every lot, and then that's paid back. And over time you get your money back. So it really is, uh, it's a, it's a short-term expenditure, but you will get your, you'll be made whole in the long run. Excuse me for interrupting, but that 5.5 million is kind of a misnomer in my mind because it's an immediate number we have to get out, but it's money we'll get back. Hold on, what does that mean? What, are you guys familiar with this program? What does that mean you get your $5.5 million back to made whole? It's a typical, what program? Yeah, typical recapture that many mm -hmm. cities and counties do. I mean, many developments are, are, are funded that way. So over what period of time would you recapture the $5.5 million? Depends how fast the land gets developed. Mm -hmm. So um, who's developing the land? Us? No. no. Whatever landowner, whoever buys the property. Okay. So if there's no development out there, there's no recapture, if there's some, there's some recapture. Yeah. It all depends on whether there's development or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's just a risk we have to assume. Well, I, we built, I built two developments, and we put recaptures on every one of them, and sooner or later they all get built out. I mean, if you start something out there, it's not going to sit static and not go anywhere. I'm sure that the owner, Mr. Johnson, will put this heavy heat on that to develop that as quickly as possible because that's desirable property. So anyway, I digress from what's the uh, difference in cost potential between having at Greenfield and having it here on this campus. The biggest difference is that utility cost. Uh, we're still going to have site development costs if we build it here because we still have to try and come up with parking solutions mm -hmm. and we're still going to have great challenges. Uh, we're going to have to rework some streets so it feels if we're going to try and build the entire 70,000 square feet on this site. And so, in my simple mind, the site development cost is going to be either here or it's going to be there. And the only real differentiator is the utility cost because the utilities are here. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's if you build the 70,000 square foot Correct. option. So if you slim that down, if you went with a skinnier option, yeah. it slims the price down. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, exactly. What, I think one of the things that the uh, commission needs to determine is how long are you building this for? Mm -hmm. Because this is really based on a six courtroom per floor model. 
that's that's kind of the, the idea behind this. Mm -hmm. Potentially six courtrooms per floor, and you could slim it down to where there's four courtrooms per floor and make it so it just builds out for eight courtrooms. Now your projections on your caseloads, which it means you'll be in kind of a tight situation down the road if you did that because it's gonna be pretty expensive to just add on a small addition to each floor next to the courthouse. If you're to expand it out for, if it ultimately needs to be 12 courtrooms. Of course. Go ahead, Commissioner. Um, apologies for my tardiness. I have been able to be on the phone. Um, one thing that we are amiss, though, is we have no official communication from the city unless someone has been, been presented to it recently um, on timeline, the possibility of actually getting that service out there. I think we need to uh, have uh, an individual or our direct Bill Golden to contact the city, contact the property owner, and put this to rest because if if there isn't an agreement on purchasing the land or the ability to purchase the land or the ability to run the sewer or when that sewer would be out there, we are wasting taxpayer money not making a decision. And we need to get a decision made. Now, there's huge advantages. Um, advocates of a new green site has been a long standing, in my point, because the county is growing. We were short-sighted and didn't have the ability to expand this building. <clears throat> we are suffering from that decision. So let's not make a decision that is not forthright for the future. Either site can do that. It's just what is the plan to do it. But if we don't have the information on the Greenfield site that says, yes, it is for sale, at what price, what are the conditions, what are the terms, when will it be serviced, I think we are, we're, we're spinning wheels in mud and we don't even know it. And so I would ask that either we direct Bill Golden or somebody from this commission to finally get an answer on that. Thank you. G gentlemen, have you estimated what the Greenfield site land acquisition cost would be to the county? Yes, I had a discussion um, with a representative from the owner, and uh, what was on the table was that uh, the, the land would be at zero cost, but in exchange, the county would be asked to put in the infrastructure uh, to get the utilities out there. And it's still to be worked out in terms of streets or other other on-site improvements. So what would those costs be? That's the 5.5. Yeah, it, you know, the total on it, I think, is closer to, it's over 10 million. It's over 10 million with the, uh, to bring utilities out there with the city paying for their portion of it. My understanding was, is that <clears throat> that 10 million minus the 5 million from the city of Canton was just to bring utilities out there. That's correct. But what you're saying is Mr. Johnson also wants us to put other infrastructure in out there, streets, other development, correct? I think that's so what, what are those costs? Well, what we'd propose for a, you know, a development like this, we'd sure propose that, that it should be right up right up by the highway. So there's there's very little that we would be, it'd be enough to bring it to whatever whatever we need as a county. Has an analysis been done of what those extra <clears throat> costs are? No, it hasn't. So we don't know? We don't know, but I think we it's a negotiation. And I don't think a public forum is probably the right forum to do that. So I think appointing someone to go negotiate it, I think mm -hmm. is the right next step. So just to be clear then, it's an unknown risk at this time. <clears throat> Correct. But once again, any any costs that you have on infrastructure, if you did put a street in, for example, you could put that on your recapture as well. Correct. Yep. But again, I think we need to solidify an actual versus a verbal mm -hmm. communication. How many acres is it? Uh, what are those terms? I think we're at a point we should have that information before we're... Because I would hope that when we're done, and I, I was at a, I had a planning and zoning meeting last night, so not able to attend the Worthing, um, we need to make a decision soon. And we can't make a decision if we don't know for sure what the terms would be on that Greenfield site. We think that's your next step if it's going to go that direction to you know, really take uh, you know, further consideration on that. We'd recommend that you appoint someone to do that and we get it, we get it pinned down. I'm going to be happy to do that. Because how many approximate acres are we talking about with the Greenfield Center? I think that needs to be determined yet, but I think it was initially thrown out there, 30 acres. 30? Mm -hmm. That would be enough for a jail and for the 
And I think there's some discussion. I have had an opportunity to speak with the, the party last week. I reached out because I had not heard anything. Um, I think the, the location is still in up in the air exactly where those 30 potential acres would be. But Right. So a lot of details, I think, that are pertinent to making a decision. And, like, again, we are spending a lot of taxpayers' money by not doing something, so hopefully we can get this done soon. Thank you. Commissioner Aarons, when you made mention of other options and other sites, is this kind of what you were referring to? Yeah, I think it's like Commissioner Poppins was articulating just now is the fact that um, there's, there's two options here. There's the Greenfield site and then there's the campus option here. What I haven't seen that I would like you all to produce is the plan for the campus option. And I think that was discussed amongst the commissioners. What you've only brought us here today, though, is the Greenfield site option. Correct. Right? We, we pre previously presented it uh, on the campus option as well. Okay. That's, I think it's either option A or what B. What I'd like to see is a skinny down version of this and what that's going to cost. And how, how much do we skinny it down? <coughs> how, many, how many courtrooms is really what drives the size of it? Well, I'm not as, uh, what do I want to say? I don't think the number of courtrooms that I don't think 12 courtrooms is necessarily the right number. Okay. So because that just what that is. just presumes total growth, total maximum okay. growth from now through the future is never <laughs> going to stop. So what what the 12 was is looking at it, what was projected for 20 years, and with the idea <laughs> that you wouldn't build out those courtrooms until needed, and you'd use uh, the space for uh, state's attorney in, in the interim. So that, that's the concept behind it. But if you want to do it for 10, 8, I think you tell us, we'll we get you to run the numbers. Well, I don't think we get one circuit court judge from the legislature every single year for the next 12 years. I think on average we get one about, what, every one and a half to two and a half years for our circuit. Okay. So that kind of tells you what the legislature thinks our size should be. Right. I think, uh, Commissioner, you have an opinion on what size you want. And to shrink this thing down, to me, you know, I, I hear now for this courthouse that we built in 2008, why didn't you build it bigger? Why didn't you put another floor? Why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you? We get one opportunity to go to the public with a plan for the future so we don't have to go back to them again and saying, oops, well, we decided that we wanted, we didn't believe that the projections were, or we didn't, and all that kind of stuff. I am not, I am not an expert on the court system. I am not anything on that. I believe that we build for the future. We look towards long-term growth. And you had a fan committee come in here of, of in individuals that studied our growth, that studied our revenue, that studied our future. And when you look at, our, at, at by 2030, what do you think we're going to be? We could very well be 100,000 people. And then they could ask, those generations or those people could ask back here, why didn't you think by beyond... Uh, you know, a few million dollars. Now, I'm not trying to say that we have flushed with money, but you have two sites. They're both comparable. They both cost the same. One has tremendous potential to meet our needs for the future. To me, that is the one that we should take the long look at, and that is the one that has the greatest potential to serve and meet our needs for a growing, growing uh, county. My God, we're number three. We're going to bump number two. Well, we're we're not going to bump number two anytime soon. Uh, their 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 numbers just aren't there. That's not true. Uh, that's Pennington County. We're substantially lower than Pennington County right now. Facts matter, Commissioner. Um, additionally. Uh, before the issue gets memory hold, uh, you and I both sat on that uh, uh, committee regarding the courthouse, and what the committee reported out was a six plus two option, not a twelve plus option. So 
um, just to make clear to the public, what the committee decided was six plus two. And there was a caveat added on to that that we'd want to see what the cost is. And for me, it's not about the, the timing or the number of cases or uh, the square footage. A big concern for me is if you want to make this project work, and I think you can, you have to go to the public with a reasonable option. And the public needs to see that you evaluated and scrutinized with the assistance of these experts up here all the options. The only option we have here in front of us today is the predetermined option of going out to the Greenfield site. I think what the public would like to see is a little more scrutiny with regard to the six plus two option, which the committee reported out. Committee said eight, not 12. I don't know where the four extra courtrooms have come from. Fine, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's good to have options, right? It's good to present us with options. It's good to present the public with options. But when you start talking about a $58 million uh, expenditure, I think the public right now is not there. So if you want to go to the public with one option, uh, I don't think that's a recipe or a measure for success. I think the public wants to see a few other options as well. Because, I'm sorry, the economy right now is at the number one issue for people. If you put $58 million in front of voters today and you said, well, you know, think about the future, they're going to think about their future not the county's future. And so we need to balance those two things. We need to balance their pocketbook with the county of the future. And that means we don't get all the bells and whistles. We don't get the, we don't get the $58 million facility. So all I'm saying is let's have a few more options here that people can evaluate and scrutinize. So we presented uh, the two previous options, one downtown here next to the courthouse, uh, which is, you know, along this line, added on. Um, how many courtrooms should we downsize it to for another option? Well, the committee reported out a six plus two option. So we should do it for eight? That's what the committee reported out. And so if we're gonna sit here and bang the desk and say, rely upon what the committee said, then we should at least be scrutinizing and evaluating what the committee reported out. Those two judges sat on the committee and <clears throat> voted verbally to approve it. I'm not saying one option is right or wrong. I'm saying it's a balance. And it's all about how do we get that how do we get the right balance? And I think some of the right balance comes with the fact that the committee reported out a six plus two option, not a twelve option. So that's all I'm saying is let's see some numbers. Let's let's see analysis that we can bring to the voters that supports what the committee voted out. And then we can look at the bottom line on that. I will say, Mr. Chair, I, I do agree with uh, Commissioner Poppins that probably we need to approach the municipality of Canton and also the owner of the Greenfield Center for more specific details. Agreed. I think we do I, too. I would like to, uh, since we have this new policy of having the public speak, and we have members of the committee that served on that, if they have any questions or comments that they would like to make. Well, before we do that, are the members are the members of the commission finished with any questions for these gentlemen? Well, I think that if there are questions that are brought forward, we can always make comments. I don't know that we have to put a gag rule on ourselves just to say, well, we're all done with all questions. We may not be. Well, I don't think we should either, but, but, but I'm like just to, asking as a courtesy. Yeah. Does anybody have any further questions for them right now? Okay. But doing so, it here is a possibility. I know you made reference that it might be difficult. I mean, square footage or whatever. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. the biggest challenge that we've seen all along is parking. Yeah. And, you know, right now parking is, seems limited, and I can't. This is what I'm told it's hearsay to me that parking is a challenge here. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to 
We may be able to get that shuttle service from but Turner the, County for the fair when they uh, bring all the patrons in around. Let me remind my colleagues, Target Field, where the Twins played, is put on eight acres, which is pretty impressive, which you can do with space. Well, maybe we'll have the a... the biggest challenge is parking, yeah. and if that's acquiring, you know, other property near here to create space, you know, maybe that's part of the option. Yeah, maybe we'll have a roving shuttle that uh, picks people up from four blocks away from here, right? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner thank Poppins, you. Uh, two, two points, if I may. Timeline on either site differential for getting a structure bill. What would be your best guess at this point of, of either structure time in months that it would take to build from the first day that dirt is moved? I think we're looking at 24 to 28 months initially. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say? Will you repeat that? 24 to, 24 to 28 months. Again, that is one of the reasons why we cannot continue to, we need to make a decision, gentlemen, and members of the audience. <clears throat> we need this yesterday. We need to get this done. Um, let's get whatever information. If we're going to negotiate with uh, the party that has the Greenfield site and with the city, I think that should have been done a long time ago. We're going to get it done hopefully soon. Um, the other point would be is, there was a commitment back in 0406 uh, when this was to stay downtown. Um, a recommendation at that time was to try to contact and, and acquire any property. I think it'd be prudent as, uh, as well to the public to ask them, is there, are there any properties adjacent to the courthouse that would be willing to sell? Because at $5 million or $6 million, there might be uh, a lot of uh, ability to acquire property in downtown Canton. So I think that, too, would be a pertinent request uh, to be put out to the public to find out. I know there's not a desire from uh, a, uh, the board to do condemnation by any means, um, but there may be willingness of property owners next to the courthouse to sell if that is the issue is how do we grow on this site. So thank you. So as, as a you know, project manager, of course, the thing I look at is, okay, who's going to do what? Is um, Commissioner Schmidt, are you going to talk to the property owner? I'm going to talk to the property owner, yes. And is Bill Golden going to be talking to the city? To I think know? we could ask um, uh, Larry Nelson, who represents the city, okay. and we can go and get an answer from them uh, probably by the end of the week. So who, but who from the county will be doing this? I'll be happy to join him. I, okay. Why don't we have Commissioner Gibbon if it's all right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he, he represents them. Yep. All right. Commissioner all right. So Gibbon. Commissioner Schmidt, Commissioner Gibbon are going to reach out to the Greenfield site owner as well as to the city to <laughs> inquire about uh, timelines and cost with regard to the Greenfield site. And then I guess the additional question to the city is inquiring about. Um, the commitment that was made back in 2006 that Commissioner Poppins referenced regarding keeping the site uh, using the campus concept site. So there's our task organization, right? Okay. 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 Now, I would invite members of the public if they would like to speak to this agenda item. <coughs> Um, members of the Commission, my name is Larry Nelson. Uh, I'm on the citizen portion of the Courthouse Committee. Uh, there's been some discussion here today about uh, six courtrooms, 12 courtrooms, and I would uh, point out that the proposal is an initial um, building of, of four courtrooms. If needs arise in the future, it allows an expansion of two on the third floor, and if needs arise on the second floor, it allows for an additional six. Um, and our committee, the, the citizen portion, thinks this is a good plan because it is flexible. It allows accommodation for the needs of the state's attorney's office, the sheriff's office, uh, and the flexibility to put in courtrooms if necessary. And it's the, the plan we've been looking for, to be quite frank with you, that allows some flexibility where you don't get into a box. And whether it be sited here or sited out at the Greenfield site, uh, we believe it has a lot of merit and you ought to consider it. Uh, we don't see the initial plan as being a 12 courtroom plan. We see it as a, a plan that allows you, if you have the growth that we think that will occur, to make it 12. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public who'd like to address the agenda item? Okay, seeing none, um, we will move on to the next agenda item. We've got Sheriff Swenson here to talk about. Oh, excuse me. My apologies. We've got uh, the Miss Block here to talk about board action to approve a payment plan for property taxes. Hi, Debbie Block, Treasurer. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. I have a homeowner in Lenox that is requesting a payment plan for his taxes for 2019 through the current year of 2021. He would like to make $500 monthly payments, and um, the amount that he owes is around $3,400, so he would have that done in May of next year. Okay. Uh uh, members of the board, you've uh, heard the request. Is there a motion? I so move. Second. Is there a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Yes, here. sir. Go ahead. It's up for public discussion. Just have to oh, yeah. Thank you. i got to get better. At I'm getting better. Is there any member of the public who would like to speak to the uh, agenda item? Okay. Hearing none, seeing none. Clerk will call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, um, okay, now the uh, sheriff's office wants to make a request for a vehicle purchase. Good morning. Um, I'm just here to request to place the vehicle order for the 2023 budget. Um, I've looked at three options. Actually, the one that's not an option is the Ford interceptor it's the ford explorer that the which would be the civilian model they are no longer offering that this year so that's going to be interesting to see what most departments do then wagner auto has a pursuit rated dodge durango uh, for 41,798, and we have the chevy tahoe from carl's out of des moines is 41502 so the towels are a couple hundred dollars cheaper and quite a bit more vehicle for that comparing the tahoe to the durango the tahoe is a much better vehicle so i'm going to request to purchase five of those and one dodge charger for the jail division which is a separate budget so i don't know if i need to do these separately okay so my request is to purchase the vehicles that i budgeted for for 2023 all in your budget steve Yes. They're all in your budget? Correct. Okay. Okay, you've heard the request. The request is to purchase five Tahoes Correct. and one Dodge Charger. Correct. Is there any motions or questions? I would move for approval from uh, Sheriff Swanson's request. Hold on. Um, does the public like to speak to this? Okay. Hearing none, seeing none, I'll open the floor to the members, questions or motions. I will move for approval of Sheriff Swenson's request for the purchase of the vehicles for his department. Is there a second? I'll second. Got a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Thank you. Number seven, proclamation for supporting Operation Greenlight for Veterans. Susan Irons. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you don't get to hear from me very often, but you know tomorrow's a big day for me and yes. for all veterans in our county. And uh, November is a big month for veterans and our military families. Um, Operation Greenlight. Um, I'm going to read the press release that was sent to our local newspapers because it explains it. Uh, Lincoln County announced that the courthouse was illuminated as a part of Operation Greenlight, a new initiative between Lincoln County, the National Association of Counties, and the National Association of County Veteran Service Officers. Operation Greenlight's mission is to show support for veterans of all military conflicts, as well as raise awareness about the unique challenges faced by many veterans and their families, and the resources that are available at the county, state, and federal level to assist veterans and their families. 
By shining the green light, we're expressing our profound gratitude for the sacrifices and contributions our veterans and their families made on the battlefield and at home. At a time when our country is faced with, with many issues, we can all agree that those individuals who risked and sacrificed their lives fighting to protect our country and our way of life deserve our support. And I encourage everyone to join with us in displaying a green light for our veterans and their families. Residents are encouraged to participate by simply changing one light bulb in their house to a green bulb. This can be an exterior light that neighbors and passersby passers see, or an interior light that sparks a conversation with friends. By shining a green light, we are letting our veterans know that they are seen, appreciated, and supported. While this event is focused around the weekend of Veterans Day, participants are encouraged to continue shining the light year-round. Participants are encouraged to share their participation on social media and using a hashtag. So if you've noticed, um, our clock tower is lit in green, and I thank John Rombo for assisting with that, and then in our entryway, we also have green lights. And, um, you know, tomorrow is Veterans Day, and it's a holiday, and people aren't working in many places, but I encourage anybody to, who, who can to go to your local Veterans Day programs. There are many um, in, our, in our communities in the county. Uh, of note is uh, T. They are dedicating their memorial tomorrow afternoon at 4.30. Uh, something else I wanted to bring up. Um, on Tuesday, the 15th, in, uh, at 7 o'clock in the Harrisburg High School, we will be having the uh, secretary from the South Dakota Department of Veterans Affairs, the deputy secretary, uh, some other uh, employees from the State Department, uh, the director of the State Veterans Cemetery, there to have a uh, just, it's kind of like a town hall uh, networking session with veterans from our local communities. So. This has all been, you know, put out in, in papers and things, but, you know, a lot of times people don't have time to read or they might miss it. So, I, you know, if you, uh, you see anybody, tell them to, to go there. And I also encourage you guys to attend as well. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity to have our state leadership uh, see what issues we have with our local veterans and con concerns and questions, and they can answer those. And I'll be there too. So um, with that, is there any questions before I, I'm assuming, do I read the proclamation? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Yes. Does anybody do. have any questions? I think that's, I think Please that's do. Uh, part of the deal, right? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I have my froggy voice, so I apologize, but what can you do? <laughs> I don't have COVID, so. <laughs> any questions from anybody? No, I have a comment, though, Susan. I want to thank you for bringing this forward and spearheading this. And you're a veteran, and you have family members that are serving right now and veterans. And I want to thank John Rombo. He's a former Army captain. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have other uh, veterans as well here serving as county employees. So we want to thank them for their service and uh, appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. All right, I will read the proclamation. Thank you. Supporting Operation Greenlight for Veterans. Whereas the residents of Lincoln County have great respect, admiration, and the utmost gratitude for all the men and women who have selflessly served our country and this community in the armed forces. And whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas Lincoln County seeks to honor these individuals who have paid the high price for freedom by placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all. And whereas veterans continue to serve our community in the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, religious groups, civil service, and by functioning as county veteran service officers in 29 states to help fellow former service members access more than $52 billion in federal health, disability, and compensation benefits each year. And whereas approximately 200,000 service members transition to civilian communities annually, and whereas an estimated 20% increase of service members will transition to civilian life in the near future, and whereas studies indicate that 44 to 72% of service members experience high levels of stress during that transition from military to civilian life, and whereas active military service members transitioning from military service are at a high risk for suicide during their first year after military service, and whereas the National Association of Counties encourages all counties, parishes, and boroughs to recognize Operation Greenlight for Veterans, 
And whereas Lincoln County appreciates the sacrifices of our United States military personnel and believes specific recognition should be granted, therefore be it resolved with designation as green light for Veterans County, Lincoln County hereby declares Veterans Day November 11th, 2022 through the month of November as a time to salute and honor the service and sacrifice of our men and women in uniform transitioning from active service. Therefore, be it further resolved that in observ observance of Operation Greenlight, Lincoln County encourages its citizens and patriotic tradition <laughs> to recognize the importance of honoring all those who made immeasurable sacrifices to preserve freedom by displaying a green light in a window of their place of business or residence. Thank you, Susan. Appreciate okay. it. Um, you. you know, I want to make this one comment. Um, these kinds of things become more important because um, I want to give you a statistic that I just heard. Um, I, missed a, I missed one of our meetings here two weeks ago because I was gone. I was down in Fort Leavenworth at the battalion command pre-command course. And one of the statistics that was given to us by the speaker was that what the military is finding out is that only 9% of eligible people are um, physically and or in terms of a mental health based upon the screening requirements ab able to currently serve in the military today. So the number of people that have the ability to serve in our military today is really shrinking. Mm -hmm. And then of that 9%, that we're only getting a very small percent of that 9%. And, um, and it's due somewhat to, you know, physical condition, mental health conditions, things like that. But um, the Army didn't make its end strength goal this year, neither did the Army Reserve. And I think the Marine Corps was maybe the only service that did make it. It's a much smaller force. It's only got about 250,000 Marines. But when it becomes more difficult to recruit to meet our end strength goals, I think these kinds of efforts become more important because it goes to show that, you know, our communities and our um, families ha uh, are supporting these potential new service members. And so every time we do an initiative or these kinds of things, it sends a message to young kids today and others like, hey, I am appreciated for what I do. Uh, because mm -hmm. it is getting much more difficult to recruit people to serve in an all-volunteer force. So thank you for doing this. Absolutely. And yes, I agree with you. That's very important. I like to think of it as, why would I want to go work for a company that didn't appreciate me? And I think we need to show our appreciation all the time for our veterans and their family mm -hmm. members and uh, so that we can get qualified individuals to serve our country. Does Thank anybody you. have any other questions? Or, no, he knows you're lying to say the nope. public. Okay. <laughs> Susan, I just want to thank you for your service. Yes. <laughs> Does any member of the public wish to speak to this agenda item? Okay, hearing none, seeing thank you. none. We'll move on. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Appreciate your time yes. here today. Um, okay, the next issue is the county canvas of the. Mr. Chair. Yes. May I ask for executive session to maybe resolve and take off the table number three? Well, I was kind of thinking the same thing here. Thank you. So I would I would move for an executive session. Could for I contract. ask for just one moment because uh, with Mr. Strasburg down here and uh, a representative from Henry Carlson, um, they do have an answer for cost for you for your six by twelve next to the courthouse here. If you'd like, perfect. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Okay, we just um, we just took a few minutes and um, from a high level looked at a a different model that would be um, a six plus two option, which takes this building down from what we were originally looking at. Um, oh, it's not my mouse. Sorry. takes the building size down about 18,000 square feet. And um, 
What this model does, this <coughs> model has zero built-in shell space. So this is just the building plus the six and two. Make sure everybody understands that. Um, the previous model. Uh, time out. I have a mixed motion. Is it six and two or four and two? Six and two is what we okay, just six ran. Okay, Thank that you. Is what you had said? Yeah, and that's the, that's what the committee with the two judges, right. myself, Commissioner Schmidt, reported out. You know that you know we did like the nine or ten hours of meetings, and we came up with the six plus two. Yeah. How many how many square feet does this reduce? So this this reduces the building by about eighteen thousand five hundred mm -hmm. square feet. And before you go on, those eighteen thousand square feet reduction, what is eliminated to get it down there? Uh, the shell space. Which constitutes what? No um, expansion. Additional correct? space to build additional courtrooms at a low. It's just it. Yeah, this is it. It's a block. You can't add to it. It's nothing. I'm not saying you can't add to it. You can always add onto the building, but you add an entire building. Oh. The so shell get, isn't oh, there. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Okay, so a few, of the, a few of the considerations to look at adding onto this building. This model assumes a three-story building, Correct. and what you have right now is you've got you know sort of a half a story that's low, and then uh, what previously was proposed is you know three stories above that. So that would have to be worked out to know what is, you know, what is on that half. You know, how do we tie into this existing building to match the levels? But this. This model just assumes you'd add on a three-story building, you'd have some transition of elevator stairs or, or something, we'd have to work that out. So it's like a basement, half of it? Yeah, you've got roughly a half a basement here. Correct. Clarity there then, if I may, uh, mm -hmm. would the structure have the ability to be added on to vertically? It, it could be, yes. And remember, this is just real high level yep. based Think on that's it, It's real high level. 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 We yep. understand it. Yep. Um, I think it's an important question that Commissioner Poppins brings up, though, because that was a point of contention with the current building we're sitting in right now. So it is a relevant question, and he's brought it up a couple times, and I have, and other members have too. And I think they'd, you know, the study then would have to be on does it make more sense to add on a, an addition next to it or go above? Um, and you know, do we you know upsize the mechanical systems for a potential addition? Do we upsize footings? Understand. You know, so there's some right. costs and details after we It just it, the possibility, the possibility is, is very good. Yes. I need your worksheet. And so, um, what this does to the model from a cost standpoint is it changes that fifty-three point three million dollar number down to about $45.2 million. And it's just high level. Yep. Yep. And then, of course, just at a high level, roughly, you make the same number of deductions based upon here, if it's here or at the Greenfield Correct. site. Okay. Yep. Yep. Just... Um, and like I said, the biggest difference is uh, we're not shelling space for future growth. Correct. That, that's the biggest difference between these two models. But it would have the proper footings and infrastructure to be able to vertically add onto. Yeah, I think that we could design the building to vertically add or maybe it expands horizontally. Or huh? horizontally. Correct. As a rule of thumb, because we've we've um, run the cost models many times on adding up the, on buildings that were designed to to add up, in in big picture terms, it's about fifty percent more to add the same square footage. So if it was adding, if you're adding ten thousand square feet at um, five hundred dollars a foot, it'd be ten thousand square feet at, at seven fifty. So just from a real broad broad stroke on that, the cost if, of adding up. If this building or structure that you have proposed here, does that constitute the ability to build up or would you have to put added cost in this particular structure 
to be, be be able to build up. Yeah, my experience is first first answer to your first question is yes. This model doesn't reflect the okay. ability to go up. This is just a box. Correct. But uh, what what I've seen in my experience is the additional cost is about the foundation goes up by about twenty five percent. Okay. And so. And, and obviously, at this level, I don't have that you don't have foundation this cost, but but there will be a, there'll be a little higher cost to create that to go up. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just an, so we get everything flushed out. This is a box. It has no expansion. This is just a box, which has a six point six plus two option. Period. Correct. That's now, if you says. wanted to plan for you know further growth, are going up, this fort forty. Projected number would increase as well. It would increase. Right? Yeah, it would increase slightly because of okay. the foundation. Okay. Correct. And right. I think it would also, uh, just from a uh, floor plan uh, perspective, without giving this you know more thought than what we just said the last fifteen minutes, is some of the things we had on the first level of uh, the clerk of courts, jury assembly, uh, the sheriff's uh, uh, expanding the sheriff's office than that. Uh, we, some of that may have to be on the second level, or it might end up being a two-story building instead of of three, or it might have to be configured differently. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, we've thank you for all of that. It's a, a reminder when we went through all of the proposals before and tried to figure out how the best proposal that we had presented in the previous attempt, which would have gained us two courtrooms and a whole jail. Now we're looking at we need to get courtrooms done because that project obviously did not succeed. Um, the, what I did learn from that is the public can understand what they what we present to them. Uh, what we need to present to them now is the urgency that we need to get this done. So um, this is real money that we're, we're taking from the taxpayers from delaying this. Um, so whatever is picked, we need to pick it. You know, There's a crystal ball. I, is it going to be the best plan, hindsight? No. Because it never is. There's always uh, the crystal ball afterwards uh, scenario. So um, we definitely need to get through this. I think we made some steps today with contacting the city uh, and finding out for sure if the Greenfield site um, is going to be or is not going to be an option, and if it is an option, at what true cost. Um, so I, thanks for coming in, giving in a, a, another lesson to us on it. Uh, but yes, horizontally um, in South Dakota, uh, because the price of land and, and such is less expensive than going vertically. Um, but if, and again, if we had to, we can go on this campus. Um, the point being is we need to do something. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your time today. Thank uh, you. Thank so, you. Commissioner Poppins, back to your point. Yes, I would ask for a motion uh, for executive session <laughs> with the intent to uh, address uh, topic uh, item agenda three. Thank you. Do you just want to address that <laughs> issue? Because that's the only one that I have. I don't know if there's other issues. Bless you. Well, I mean, here would be my intent. So um, we just address all the executive session issues at once, at one time. And but we've got Sherry and her team standing yep. by to do the canvas. So <clears throat> is there any objection to just doing executive session and then coming back out? The only the question would be is if there's a lot of executive session, the public has an opportunity for public comment. I wouldn't want to delay uh, those individuals right. extended. Um, I think we could do an executive session on this one topic, be done and move on. But if there's no other objects. Or if you wanted to, you could do the public comment and then go into executive session. I was just going to say that. What? <laughs> the, the same token is I think the public, if they would want to comment on number three, if we did take it off the table, would be appropriate at that time yes, before. Be able to, it's an yeah. Agenda. Okay. Yeah. So, um, let's. Would you like me to withdraw my motion? If you want to. I'll Please. do it if the public has wants to get up an address. Okay. So, let's do this. Does anybody from the public want to address agenda item number three? Uh, making an offer on property adjacent to the airport. Okay. Now, does anybody from the public, here's what I want to do. Does anybody from the public want to make public comment at this time for general open public comment? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Linda, go ahead. If you want to. If you want to. Well, I, was, I thought I was saying yeah. 
Well, if you want to if you want to wait for that, you can. I'm just offering it now. Since number eight is an agenda item, you'll also be able to make public comment yeah. after that. Yeah. Well, I can wait for okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So uh, let's go into executive session, and then uh, if there's a motion, I'll offer then... that motion for the third time. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion and second to go into executive session under SDCL 1 25 2, sub 3, and sub 4. Any discussion? Any discussion from the public? Any discussion from the members? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Okay, we're in executive session. Thank you. Exact second. Public have any discussion on the agenda item? Hearing seeing none. Any discussion from the members? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. This was motion by Pop and second by Schmidt. Correct to come Thank out of you. executive. Commissioner Gibbon. Yes. Commissioner Poppins. Yes. Commissioner Schmidt. Yes. Commissioner Aarons. Yes. Okay, so we're in regular session. Now, before we get to the canvas, we've got two agenda items that resulted as a result of executive session that we need to deal with. The first agenda item uh, that action should be taken on is uh, to authorize state's attorney's office to make an offer on property adjacent to the airport. Is there a motion? Or first of all, does the public have any discussion on that agenda item? Okay, hearing and seeing none. Are there any motions or action the board would like to take? Um, uh, action Chair, I would ask that the board uh, present an offer uh, based on discussion and with the terms, again, uh, uh, based on discussions, purchase the approximately 5.3 acres adjacent to the T Airport, or Lincoln County Airport. Got a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Got a motion and second. Is there any discussion? The public? Okay. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Second agenda item. Um, remind me, which one was this? Was this executive session one or two? <coughs> yeah, it's number two. So um, I'm going to ask for a motion or discussion from the board with regard to executive session item number two. Um, Mr. Chair, I would uh, motion that we reject an offer that we received on a portion of the land uh, that is owned by the county uh, adjacent to the municipality or part of the municipality of T. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Got a motion and second. Is there any discussion from the public about the agenda item? Okay, hearing nothing from the public, anything from the members? Okay, clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? Yes. Commissioner Schmidt? Yes. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Okay, uh, we're on to the county canvas of the votes for the general election. Public comment. Oh, um, yeah, I was going to say, um, if the public wants to come up and speak on the agenda item, you can come up now or you can come up after we're done with it. It's up to you, Linda. On the agenda item, I'm public comment. Okay. All right. So there's nobody to speak towards the issue of the you're county on, canvas. You're on, you want to speak on the agenda item number eight? No, she wants to speak during regular opportune public comment time. We did that before you went into executive. No, she, she said she'd hold off. So we're going to do the canvas now, and nobody is speaking on that issue. Yep. Okay, so Kayla is going to hand out to you these items. She's going to hand out the 850 results, the ERM results, the blue recap, which is the optical scans, the green recap, which is the express vote, the yellow recap for absentee, and the bright green tally sheet, which was prepared by the county. What you're going to do is you'll open the poll books, add the precinct uh, numbers to the absentee precinct, 
And this should total what the 850 results are, which also totals the ERM results, the blue recap, the green recap, the yellow recap. Um, spot check the resolution book to the pull book. And as you're going through this, I want to read the, re read the totals of the results. And at the end of this, then, we will sign the canvassing sheet. Now, Sherry, when you say 850, that's the name of the voting machine? Correct. Okay. That's like a model that, Well, it's the model name of the number, tabulator. Model number of the tabulator. Okay. Yep. Okay, so then uh, the admin rules for canvassing of the board are up on the screen. So I'm going to start with reading the results unless anybody has any questions regarding the... Okay, this is... Okay, so for United States Senator... We had Brian Benj, 7,365, Tamara Lesner, 912, and John Thune, 19,703. For United States Representative, we had Colin Duprell, 5,360, okay, Dusty Johnson, 21,002. For Governor and Lieutenant Governor, uh, Jamie Smith and Jennifer Keens got 10,727. Tracy Quint and Ashley Strand got 606. Thank you. Christy Nome and Larry Roden had 16,828. For Secretary of State, Thomas Cool had 9,916. Monet Johnson had 16,642. Attorney General, Marty Jackley had 20,847. For State Auditor, Stephanie Martin had 8,461. Renee Meyer had 1,144. Richard <coughs> Sackgas had 16,689. Um, for State Treasurer, John Cunningham had 8,584. Josh Heater had 17,433. Commissioner School of Public or Commissioner of School and Public Lands, Timothy Asur had 8,581. And Brock Greenfield had 17,072. Public Utilities Commissioner Jeffrey Barth had 8,462. Chris Nelson had 17,898. Herman Otten had 6,513 for Senator District 6. Um, State Senator District 12, Jessica Meyer had 1,693. Arch Bill had 2,686. State Senator District 13, Jack Kolbeck had 5,710. Laura Hubble had 2,162. State Senator District 16, Donna Larson had 1,270. Jim Bolin had 3,289. Brian Burgey had 317. State Representative District 6, Aaron Awer, 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 Alward had 3,715. Ernie Otten had 5,559. State Representative District 12, Kristen Hayward had 1,323, Aaron Royer had 1,447, Greg Jamison had 2,450, Amber Arlent had 2,564. State Representative District 13, Tony Van Heusen had 4,616, Sue Peterson had 4,456. State Representative District 16, Matt Ness had 1,383, Kevin Jensen had 2,742, Carla Lambs had 2,856. Supreme Court Justice Retention Devaney, yes had 18,511, no had 3,955. Supreme Court Re Justice Retention Salter, yes had 18,519, no 3,874. Position A for Second Circuit, Robin Holman had 13,704. Position B for Circuit Court, Sandra Hansen had 13,326. Position C for Second Circuit, Doug Barnett had 9,964. Eric Johnson had 5,591. Mm -hmm. Position D for Second Circuit, Natalie Damgard had 13,015. Position E for Second Circuit, had John Peckus had 11,807. Okay, where do we sign when it checks out? You'll sign at the end when it's all done. When it's all there'll done? Be, there'll be a canvas and sheet. So you don't sign each individual no. one? No. Okay. That's um, pos to know. Position F for Second Circuit, Camilla Thieler had 11,133. 
position G for second circuit, Jennifer Mamanga had 11,147. Position H for second circuit, Susan Sabres had 11,377. Does this go with it? Does this go? Yep. Position I okay. for Second Circuit, Doug Hoffman had 11,252. Position J for Second Circuit, James Power had 10,913. Position K for Second Circuit, John, John Song had 11,544. Position L for Second Circuit, Rachel Rasmussen had 11,414. This is which one again? Joel's ready for another one. Oh, sorry. Constitutional Amendment D. Uh, yes vote, 16,156. No vote, 11,212. Initiated measure 27. Yes vote, 13,866. No vote, 14,115. Initiated measure City of Sioux Falls. Yes vote had 7,524. No vote had 8,619. Congratulations to all the candidates. So just some information over the election process. Um, Kayla, we have how many registered voters? 44,000-ish. What was our percentage area of voters that we have? It was overall, it was about 60%. 60% overall. Um, total ballots cast were 28,483. What? These are done. This one is done. I, I wanted to uh, thank Jim Bullen. Was that Jack Colbeck and Chad for coming in and participating for the public test for the machines. They had some really good questions. Sherry, did any races are any races within the margin of error? There are not any races for uh, recount. Okay, so it's all done then. Yep. Okay. Um, Check something here. Yeah. I think we're fine. So these all checked out. Where's that one final page? Six four. The yellow sheet. This one. What's that? Is there a yellow sheet that's supposed to be with it, or did it did it get stuck in the other one? Have very long lines, but you know, Is this it? Um, no, I mean there. No, I didn't have any complaints regarding people waiting uh -huh. too long in lines. Um, there was one precinct where we're going to separate the lines. We're going to do an A through L and M through Z, so that they can move faster. But other than that, they okay. said they went off without too many hitches. Okay. Kayla, did we have any, we had how many provisional ballots? We had one All provisional right. ballot, and we did not count it. Just one. Just one. Okay, there we are for this one. Next. Did they say they lived here? That was, uh, they said they registered to vote at, is that the one that was at Augustana? They said they registered to vote at Augustana, and we had set this right no way for first. them to know. Okay, what is it? this one? Is Delaprea. Uh, Delaprea. <laughs> okay. Hopefully, that'll kind of write your day, Commissioner. Yes. What was the total in your district, Joel? Uh, what was the total? Yeah, it, 
Yeah, there was a good turnout overall, I think. People stayed busy. A lot of our precincts said that they didn't have time to stop and take lunch or and so deal number if you had to say for precinct of voting. What was what? What do you mean an ideal number? 100% turnout? Yeah. That'd be an ideal number. <laughs> yeah. No, how many ballot? I mean, how many people voting as a precinct? I think with the redistricting, it's down to about 3,000. Our, our biggest two falls precinct is mm -hmm. just a little over 3,000. Our goal for a precinct is like 1,500. Thank you. That checked out. That checked out. No, we print 100%. You do. Yep, of okay. active and inactive voter. Just this was. Uh, ballots, voter turnout. Okay. Because we don't want to run out. Yeah, you never run out. Mm -hmm. We box them up. We keep them for 60 days the, and then they get shredded. Yep. So we'll have a shredding company come and they'll shred the previous. Uh, the stuff that we're able to shred, and then they'll take the unvoted ballots and shred those as well. Pardon? Uh, this is Delp here, and this was which one? This, yep, that's big matches. Yep. Okay. But you want this in here, yeah, don't you? Or do you, I need that one for this? Yeah. No, you already went through this, didn't you? I believe so. Which one was this? Uh, no, I think I got to do this one then, yeah. Okay. Is there more? Maybe some more. Okay. This is. Uh, okay. So there's nothing in this one. There's nothing in this one. Yeah, they get two Okay. Baker. 
So when I say that our elections went off without a hitch, um, if you know anybody that's worked in a precinct, personally thank them um, because of their work and dedication and because of the work and dedication of my office staff. That's why we don't have any problems with our elections. I heard many comments about the efficiency and the time, how quickly and how well organized they were. I mean, that was that was when we were going in to vote and leave. They take pride in the work that they do. It's. And it is a long day for them as well. It is a long day. Kayla, would you work what, 20 hours? Yes. <laughs> and smiled till the very bitter end. Just kidding, she didn't. <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that some very nice writing in those books? Very nice. You know, the one we've had several years, Sherry, I can tell by her back slant. Is that right? Yeah. During the absentee board, I had one gentleman that wouldn't trade places because we were he was afraid we wouldn't be able to read his writing. Some people open those books, they wouldn't be able to read that writing just because they don't know what cursive is. The King's X on this. Oh, oh.
this has not been Well, and that's right, and that's where my how soon will that be? Uh, that's the first week of December. It is the first week. And here, I'll give you this. Oh, fantastic. Okay.
been doing it for a long time. Yeah, you, you found the one we were looking for. <laughs> like crazy that day. <laughs> anyway, you know, all of a sudden about 5.30 it just changed. Just like the weather got in those stocks. You know, it, it, all of a sudden it just, God, it snorted the tractor. And, I mean, it just, the night air I get it. Yeah, it makes a big day. Oh. Was there any other questions regarding the election? How do you guys work on your signatures so you can't read? All right, we got the canvas out of the way. The rest will finish up. Uh, next item on the agenda, public comment. You're finally up, Linda. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Being patient. Thank you. I'm Linda Montgomery. I'm from Fairview, South Dakota. I am here again for discussion of the CVR. There is no personalities in what I'm saying here. This is about the machines. I want to give you a rundown of the CVR that we have been dealing with. Uh, request for the CVRs in the 2020 data uh, for the that data of the CVRs was sent in 2 3 of 2022 and it was denied on 2 14 2022. Another request for CVRs for 2020 was requested on 2 24 of 2022 and was denied on 3 1 2022. Another request for CVR for primary election of 2022 was placed on 6-15-2022 and denied on 6-24 because uh, stated that the uh, CVRs didn't exist. Another request for the machine logs on 3 8 and it was again denied. After these repeated denials, the only recourse we had was to hire a lawyer to try to get the public information from those machines. Now the CVR option, the government made ESNS, Dominion, and all the other voting machines that they have that CVR option in the machines. The reason for it is to make auditing the machines 
easier and quicker. And so it's there. We did go to um, court over another issue that um, the state's attorney and another attorney was there along with their attorney. And the judge at that point said that those that data from the CVR is public information. That is why I'm here again today. 2020 and 2022, the primary election, they have been requested and they are still being requested. All we want is the public information data that is on the tabulator machine, in the CVRs and the tabular equipment. This is, in, it's frustrating. Yes, we continue to pay our lawyer out of our pockets. I can't say my lawyer. The, the people who wrote FOIA's request. And then after the um, hearing that we had with a judge, then a different outside lawyers were, were secured by yourselves. Now that's at taxpayer expense, this is at our expense. We want to not have to continue to do this. We want the public information that is on the machine. This is nothing to do with people. This is nothing to do except the machine. The machine is being protected. And the people who made the machine are a third party that are not even in the state. ESNS is housed out of Omaha. There is absolutely no reason that I can see that why we are protecting a machine. That is not our alpha and omega. We need to know that we can have the public information do us. It is only right that we can do this and I'm sorry, I mean, I just don't understand why we are spending all this money on lawyers to fight for a machine? No, it's wrong. That machine is, the taxpayers paid for that machine. That data on that machine is public. It has no, it has nobody's name on it. We just want the data that is due us. And I appreciate the next time you talk about this, wherever you talk about it, that you look at, are we protecting the machine from our taxpayers? And that's the way I see it. You're protecting taxpayer information. We have a right to request public data. And going to lawsuit after lawsuit is not not the thing to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate your time. Uh, is there any other member of the public who'd like to make a comment? OK, seeing none, commissioner reports. You know, this is very interesting that commissioner reports are now buttonholed at the end like this. Keeps it short, doesn't it? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to encourage everyone if they have an opportunity to attend a Veterans Day program tomorrow. I know there's several in uh, Lincoln County. Um, I know that T especially, they're dedicating their memorials and that's at 4 p.m. Uh, at the T American Legion. So that's a special day and event for them as well. You bet. Thank I'd like you. to I'd like to do a shout out to our auditor for running an election. Once again, I think Lincoln County has the gold standard as to running the most efficient uh, election process that uh, it can be, and it's flawless. And anything to the counter has never ever had any validity in my mind. So congratulations, Madam Auditor, for running and providing us with a foolproof election. Thank you. Any other commissioners? I have a question, if I could. Go ahead. Uh, I had planning and zoning last night. Was anybody able to attend the hearing uh, in Worthing, and how was it attended? And I, I attended, yes. Um, it was a small gathering, and um, I appreciate those that did come, uh, some of them which are in the room today. 
And that's a good segue, um, just so the public knows, the next courthouse expansion informational meeting will be at the Hudson Community Center on November 15th at 6 p.m. And then just before Thanksgiving on November 22nd, we'll do a courthouse expansion meeting at Journey Elementary School up there in Sioux Falls, two blocks north or two blocks south of my house. Excuse me, north. So 6 to 7.30 are when those appointments are, are when those meetings are scheduled for. So with that, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Anybody from the public want to opine on the motion to adjourn? Hearing none. Any members? Hearing none. Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Gibbon? Yes. Commissioner Poppins? No. Commissioner Schmidt? <laughs> yes. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. We're adjourned.